while computing data for a project or another company it is very much important to consider the country risk because the riskiness of political factor in any country can play a significant role in the success or failure of the project or a company uh, empirical finance literature shows that the use of stock beta to capture the country risk of a project or a company uh, works very well in developed countries but it is not supported for working well in underdeveloped and developing countries here this model fails to capture the country risk for the developing countries uh, the solution for developing countries to capture the country's risk through beta is that when we are estimating the re or return on equity or the equity cost through the kepa model we need to add the country's spread into the market risk premium uh, this way we have total risk premium which is the sum of two terms the first term is the country's spread or the country's equity premium cep and the second term is the market risk premium uh, now we have sum of two terms that is the sum of market risk premium and the country spread when we multiply this sum with the uh, project's market risk this assume this multiplication assumes variation in the country risk premium according to the market riskiness in that particular country uh, we have another alternative model where the cost of equity is the uh, sum of three other factors uh, including the risk free interest rate the product of beta and developed markets risk premium and the third factor is the country's risk premium uh, and this alternative model assume that country risk premium or crp is same as of the project market risk now how to compute the country's equity premium or cep we have three different approaches for this computation the first is the sovereign yield spread or the sys uh, this is a simplest estimate of any country's spread to compute sys uh, how this sys is computed in fact this is the difference between the government bond yield in that country denominated in the currency of a developed country and the treasury bond yield on a similar maturity bond in a uh, uh, in the developed country if we apply this example to our country that is pakistan then we say let's say that pakistan is a home country where the project or company is located and with reference to our the developed countries say us so we have two countries the first is the developing countries that is pakistan the second is the developed countries that is the us now how these two countries can help us to determine the sovereign yield spread i uh, would need to uh, have a government bond yield in pakistan and these government bonds are to be denominated in us currency so we need to have a us currency bonds printed by the government of pakistan and we need to have the yields on such bonds next we have uh, we need to have a treasury bond yields from pakistan uh, with the similar treasury bonds available in us so in this way the spread between these two terms will be called as the sovereign yield spread uh, this sovereign yield sp spread is in fact a uh, little difficult to estimate the second approach is the country equity premium or the cep to determine cep we adjust the sovereign yield spread with the volatility of the stock market relative to the bond market so we can say 
that we can determine the country equity premium as a relationship between the stock market and the bond market multiplied with the sovereign yield spread then we add this cep to the equity premium which we estimated for a project in the developed country in order to determine the total equity risk premium let's take an example which says that if the equity risk premium for a project in a developed country is 4.5 percent and the country risk premium is 3 percent then the total equity risk premium used in the capm estimation is the sum of these two terms that is 7.5 percent if we have an appropriate beta of 1.2 and the risk free rate of 4 percent then we can determine cost of equity or re using the uh, capm model which comes to 13 percent the third approach to determine a uh, country risk is the uh, credit rating uh, countries credit rating or ccr these ccr estimates are the expected rates of return for the countries that have credit ratings but they don't have uh, equity markets now how to determine equity risk premium for uh, under this approach in fact we determine a reward to credit risk ratio for larger sample of countries that have both the equity markets and the credit ratings then we use this uh, credit risk ratio for the developing countries uh, you know where there exist no equity market we have an example to determine the country equity premium which says that Avinov is estimating country's equity premium to estimate re for his investment firm in argentina his research in Argentina showed 9.5% yield on the Argentinian government and 4.5% on similar maturity US Treasury bonds. The analyzed standard deviation of the Argentina uh, Marvel Stock Index listed on the Buenos Aires Stock Exchange during the most recent year is 40%. The annualized standard deviation of the Argentina dollar denominated 10 year government bond over the recent period is 28%. So, the question is what is the estimated country equity premium for the Argentina uh, based on the Avinaf research? When we put these values into the model, the country equity risk premium comes to 7.14%.